What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video, as you can see in the title, is all about the All Blacks Exodus. Now obviously I'm talking about the players who are scheduled to leave after the Rugby World Cup. Now the Rugby World Cup is the greatest time of the year, but shortly after the World Cup is not because we face a situation where our favourite players, our old guys, tend to leave to go further their career overseas, be it in France or England or Europe or even Japan. Why do they do it? Because the money's there, offering big portions of money to these fantastic rugby players. And one thing I've always respected the All Blacks rugby whole system is that if you want to play for the All Blacks, you've got to play in New Zealand. I've loved that rule, I've respected that rule, because it, it encourages you to play for your provincial level, it encourages you to play for the badge more, and at the end of the day, you're not playing for money, because money sometimes changes a player. It allows them to become more arrogant and maybe miss opportunities because all they think about is the green dollar sign or whatever it may be. So for me, it, 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 it's, it's a great system in place because if I look at South Africa, half the Springbok squad is pretty much in Europe playing their professional sport. Now they go there because of better opportunities and unfortunately in South Africa, with our exchange rate, it's it's wise for them to do that because they earn a hell of a lot more money than what they earn in South Africa. So I don't begrudge these guys of doing it, but um, I, I believe in playing for your, your school level, club, provincial, go to the international circuit. I've always believed in that. You want to play for your country, you stay in your country and develop and grow like that. But again, we all have different opinions on this. Now, the reason why I've chosen the All Blacks is because they're a fantastic example to, to learn from as other that other nations could learn from. Why I say that is because of the depth within the All Black squad. They have absolutely outstanding players from all their provincial levels, which is absolutely amazing because not everyone can produce such great talent. And um, because of that, we you've seen the All Blacks dominate world rugby for so many years because of all the systems in place which is fantastic to know it and a good thing because they've never folded or failed. Now, there's a lot of talk of this year because you lose, there's talks of Bowden Barrett going, Kieran Reed's gone, uh, Brody Retallick might be gone, Aaron Smith, um, Liam Squires just confirmed he's going after the World Cup and a few others to name, Sonny Ball Williams even. So those are fantastic rugby players that are going but cr where credit for the All Blacks is that they are already producing new boykies coming through. And that is amazing. Damien McKenzie's, I mean, R Omanga, I mean, this great talent, TJ Perinara, is scheduled to stay. And we'll get to that in a bit. But for me, this isn't a threat to New Zealand rugby because we've seen them lose players from 2015, 2011. I mean, Richie McCaw was a massive loss to the All Blacks, but they've recovered. They've developed, they've progressed, and they've achieved brilliant success under Kieran Reid as well. So it hasn't been the end of the world losing fantastic players. And because of the systems that are in place in New Zealand, they are able to develop fantastic rugby players. Now, obviously, losing a guy like uh, Bowden Barrett is a massive loss, but it gives a chance for Richie to come in and take over. You've got Aaron Smith. Who do you replace? TJ Perinara. Develop the next upcoming scrum off who can take over from TJ when he ends up. And that's the process that's going on. You see it with the, the Chiefs, the Highlanders, the Hurricanes, the, the Blues, the Crusaders. All the New Zealand teams are creating freaking brilliant rugby players who are able to do it. Now, obviously, we've seen situations where all black rugby players go over and then come back. Um... Marnon is a good example of that and that seems to be allowed and I don't mind that because they come back, play provincial, play in the World Cup. But what I don't like is that they come back only to play in the World Cup and then they quickly gone again. Um, and that's unfortunate for guys like uh, Goodyear um, and, and other great upcoming All Black Rugby players who are growing and developing into that position but now have to take a back seat because the big boys are back. Uh, those kind of things, but I mean, my no, no, you can't leave out because he's great. But it, you get my example of what I'm trying to say. So 
for me, this Exodus talk is, yes, it's tough. Yes, it's hard. And it will give a dent into the All Blacks squad. But there's already other players lined up to to replace him. I mean, for example, Brody Retallick was injured for so long. There was boys there ready to take on his place. Kieran Reid hasn't been there also. Some the odd injury. We've seen other players step up to replace him. So these are good things. Aaron Smith's form last year was not great. But yet, you see TJ Perinara replace and come in and show some talent. Damien McKenzie. I mean, you've got fantastic talent. And um, as, as, tough it is, as, tough it is, uh, as tough as it is to lose these guys, you've got other fantastic blood that are coming in, which is such an important thing for us all to remember. So if we look at the players who have signed on, in 2020, well, these are the until when these guys are going. So 2020, Annette Leno Brown, um, uh, Nepo Lewalala, and Scott Bar Barrett are all their contracts are scheduled to come to an end in 2020. Question is, will they continue? I think Scott Barrett will. And if, um, Anton Leno Brown, there's talk of him maybe going away. So there's another loss, but you will have another guy in his place. 2021, there's quite a few. Cody Taylor, Dane Cole, Sam Kane, Ardi Sevier, TJ Perinara, Yuani, um, uh, Damian McKenzie, and a few others. Those names for me should all sign on because Dane Coles, maybe, I don't know about his age, on the, I know he's brilliant, but he might go over Cody Taylor's coming up and doing bloody well. So they could do it, but that's 2021. Then you think, you've got three years left. Can you do it? Or two years left. Can you do it for the next World Cup? For me, those boys can hold on, and I would. Uh, 2022, Rico Ioane and Joe Moody, their contracts are coming to an end. They are definitely going to sign on um, because they're young. I mean, Rico is phenomenal. And if All Blacks lose him, that's going to be a big loss for them. Um, so I think that most of those guys are going to sign out. And I'll read through the squad that the All Blacks could look at in 2020. But um, so you're out with Kieran Reid. Ben Smith's gone. Bowden Barrett. No, Owen Franks. Um, Liam Squire. Um, Brody Retallica maybe, Sonny Bull and Aaron Smith. Obviously a few names could come up as we talk about this situation. More players will be offered, um, more positions. So there's, there's a lot to talk about. But if we look at this potential squad for 2020 for the All Blacks. I mean, listen here. Joe Moody, you've got Cody Taylor, you've got Nepo Luolala, excuse my pronunciation, Scott Barrett, Sam Whitelock, Jackson Hempo, Ari Savier, Yuani, um, TJ Perinara, Richo Muanga, Rich, sorry, Richie Muanga, Rico Yuani, Anton Leonard Brown, if he obviously continues, um, Jack Goodhu, I mean, I just mentioned him earlier, George Bridge, Geordie Barrett, then you've got some guys as well, Dan Coles, um, Big Carl, Damian McKenzie, Nagani, and so on and so on. So there's fantastic talent there. And that's why I say, I don't think this is a threat at all for All Black Rugby. They've had the situation before where they've lost the, the Richie McCaw era. Then this era grew. Yes, there's been ups and downs, but hello, they're still number one in the world. They have not lost that position. They have not looked like a weaker team. They're still one of the favorites for the world if not the favourites for the World Cup that's just coming up later this year. They're still favourites to win the championship again. They continue to show improvement and development again. Yes, they've lost to Ireland. Yes, the Lions series was a draw, but still fantastic rugby from a fantastic all-black squad. And I honestly do not see this being a problem. An exodus is always something to not look forward to because whether you're a fan of these guys or not, it's hard to watch them go, especially when they've achieved so much in their rugby career. But it's not the end of the world, guys. There's a the light at the end of the tunnel and there's fantastic talent within this All Black squad that will be here for the 2023 World Cup. And we'll probably be talking about this again in four years' times, exactly saying these youngsters' era is is going and now who's next we will have players it's not the end of the world this all black squad is still going to kick ass no matter what 
So just wanted to share my thoughts on it because it's definitely all over the news when you talk about All Blacks, um, Liam Squire leaving about, I think it was a week or two ago, and et cetera, et cetera. It happens. We don't like it, but this team will recover. They've done it before. They'll do it again. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on another video. So much more to come. We are only just getting started. Make sure you bell notifications on, especially if you need in New Zealand, because I see the videos don't always head over there. So make sure you've got your bell notifications on and share it with all your New Zealand friends, because I do not want them to miss out on my content. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.